Some people tell me y'all bullies. <laughs> y'all was mean girls. Hmm. Who said that we were bullying mean girls? It was Mulan and Meek. Before, I was gonna keep it to myself, but actually, I think I'm a little bothered now. I'm having a good time. No, no. no. Felt some stuff where I'm like, dang, Ashley wants to get her hair done. You just over there laughing. The Rasta Farnham here. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're gonna be talking about basketball wives. Orlando season one episode three and like I say these girls are really giving it especially next episode I'm excited I'm on the edge of my seat but I did notice a lot of flip-flopping a lot of misinformation or twisting the words we're gonna get into it but y'all like comment subscribe and let's get into the video yeah, let me check my check my shit real quick hotter than the fire come out I'm a flaming lips you want to play with me you can't play in me on the playground bitch you can't play with me got it one is securing the bag all right, so we open up with Nick and Mulan. They're going on the walk. And I'm all I was thinking during this whole situation was like, damn, does everybody live in the same neighborhood? Oh, girl, it was so much when you left. I wish you would have been here. That's what I'm saying. I had to go out of town for my damn host. Because what's going on? Like, literally, we see Mackenzie's house, Nick's house, and all of a sudden, Mulan coming out of the house. I'm like, girl, did production just set y'all up? Because if that's the case, cool. But damn. <laughs> right. So Nice wants to get um, a lot of her content out with the girls and she's just like, you know, I'm back in town. I just had to do a hosting gig. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just basically, you know, I'm going to do this whole party for everybody like a girl's night out. I don't know. I want to wear something good. good. Like I want to... We, I want to be able to take pictures. I want to do like a real girl's night. We all recording each other. We doing TikToks. A cut. So, you know... Milan tells Neek that, you know, at Ashley's um, grand opening event, you know, Danny was checking Mackenzie about dating her ex fiance. And, you know, I actually agree with Neek because it's just like one of the things like, what the fuck can you do about it now? Like, I get that, you know, he was your ex fiance, just that, woo, 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 woo. But at the end of the day, like, girl, you can cuss her out, you can fight her, but he's still not going to pick you. So it's just like the timelines might be different, this and the third, but he's still not going to be with you, Danny. And I get it. I get it. Like, she just want to figure out why this and the third. But it does make you seem, like, bitter. And I don't think that's really the narrative you're going with. Um, but Mackenzie, she is very much aloof and vapid at this point, too. Because she's just like, well, you know, he's telling me that she's saying this. I'm just like, girl, common sense. This is a tale as old as time. Come on now. So we see Megan in her man. My man, my man, my man, my man, my man. Right? And you know, he's a uh, popular tattoo artist too, like the basketball players and artists. And you know, Megan said that, you know, I mean, he's loyal, so she's definitely trying to stay away from the athletes. And she think that he is like the one. Dre is my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. We met about a year ago through Instagram. But he's a very popular tattoo artist in the basketball. So they've been dating for a year or so. And you know, Megan wants um, him to move to Orlando. And he's like, you know, I got responsibilities. So I can't just up and leave my kids. And then he's going to ask this stupid question. Talking about, do you like my kids? Like Megan going to say. Oh, fuck them kids and fuck you too. Like, what you think Megan was going to say? Like, obviously, she's going to say, I like your kids. Like, now, if somebody was like, I don't like your kids, red flag, you better leave the table. Because kids got number one. But whatever. Um, So, you know, Dre wants um to see how serious the relationship is going to be. Like, how like are they trying to go towards marriage? Or are they just, you know, just kicking it? So, what's going on? Megan, Megan pulls out a pregnancy test. What's the surprise? Is this a pregnancy test? Boy, here they get. Dre face dropped to the table just <laughs> right and you know my whole thing is like they both talk about they want a baby which is cool and cute but okay I'm just thinking like priorities no ring but a baby I mean maybe she don't want to get married I don't know but hey so you know Dre raises concern about um Megan not being close with her mother right but they're not close to me but that's an effort that we gotta both make. Like, my mom is number one person in my life. My and you know, the issue, I have issues with my dad. Like me and my dad, we have a strained relationship. Like, I think we stopped talking like two two years ago. Um, when I graduated college, um, he reached out. But other than that, I haven't heard from him. I hear from, by way through my sister. But other than that, like we don't talk. And it's a lot of like childhood trauma that, you know, I'm in therapy now trying to untether myself through from the childhood trauma but you know to be honest like if my guy 
told me and tried to pressure me to fix a family situation after I explained the situation to him and he wants, still wants me to try to pressure me to fix it like that's for me that's a red flag because I already told you the situation I let you know the circumstances that everything that has happened and still you're trying to pressure me to do something that, that right now I don't feel comfortable doing that's a problem for me because you should want me to be as comfortable and as confident going into a situation as I possibly can be right so, you know, Megan um, says that, you know, um, and on top of that, my family relationship should be irrelevant at this moment because y'all not like even married or whatever. Like I get that he said that, you know, family is big to him, Ohanami's family, we get it. But mm -mm. Megan said that, you know, her mama is basically like, has opportunist behaviors and you know, she wasn't f there for her as a kid. So like her mom basically gave her up to her grandma to her grandma raised her. So it's just like, girl okay so we see Milan and Mackenzie go out for lunch and they talk about how Danielle is claiming that Mackenzie is a side chick Mackenzie's like yeah you know I've never been a side chick so I don't even know what she's talking about um Rashad said that you know he would never do that to me Rashad said this Rashad said that you no know, Danielle has shared with you or whatever but it's like I've never been a side girl to Rashad I'm not the reason they broke up so, I know you can't speak I'm just like girl you was already in a situation with Neek and the other dude and you were you were in Danny's shoes but now you're just so oblivious because Rashad said like he can't lie to you and that's where Mulan's coming from she's just like girl I mean at some point like you have to realize that you know they were in an eight-year relationship they have two kids they broke up and three months later he's talking to you y'all in a relationship like, to be honest, don't tell there was a talking phase. But even if there was a talking phase before y'all were in a relationship, they feel like there's some type of overlap. You think they weren't still communicating in any sense of, like, being still but together? But I, I mean, no. I feel like the girls are mad at each other, but to be honest, they need to be mad at Rashad. Like, at the end of the day, he is the one that should be held on trial. And Milan is saying the same thing. Like, girl, at the end of the day, the, the key's in the details. So, Mackenzie's basically saying that, you know, she went to... Milan asked what happened right so mckenzie said okay so we went to tulum um danny took screenshots and you know basically was sending it to people um from a fake page that's mckenzie's story but last episode danny said that you know mckenzie posted the pictures on her story someone from a fake page screenshotted it and sent it to her say hey is this your man with mckenzie that was a story because Mackenzie was saying that Rashad posted it, but Danny said that Mackenzie posted it. What, whoever, I don't really care, but somebody lying. Rashad <laughs> created the love triangle and he's creating all the confusion between these women. Make him set up the fire, put him on a stand when he gets to the bottom of the period. Mackenzie's like, yeah, you know, Danny made um, Rashad's life hell. She is such a sore thorn in his side. It just makes no sense. And like I said, like, girl, you only seeing his perspective. You're not even trying to sit down and talk to her. And even when you have opportunities, you're just like, yeah, I'm not going to talk to her right now because I don't have time for the drama. Like, people ain't going to be mad. Girl. Bye. Um, so we see Ashley talk to her husband. She talked about that he had, like, a nine-year career in the NBA. I think he still plays, too. But, you know, she finding out that he's autistic is, like, you know... You don't really hear that story a lot. So, you know, that's amazing. And like, kudos to them and, you know, their strides um, with, um, hopefully they're doing something with like Autistic Foundation, but we'll see in the future. Um, it just goes to show that a diagnosis is not the end all be all, right? So, you know, Nick is getting ready. She's trying on a couple outfits. I love her style. Her body is giving everything. Uh, we see Danny over there at Mega's house. And when I tell you again, does everybody live in the same neighborhood? <laughs> I said, oh my God, the same white houses. <laughs> but you know, first of all, Danny and her confessional, she is bad. Ugh, that girl is fine, right? But you know, they basically talk about, you know, um, they're over the drama. They just want to come to a common ground with the girls, period. So the girls meet at the girls' night, and you know, everybody's looking cute. Everybody's, you know, put that, put it on, right? The waiter, he over here dropping glasses. I'm just like, damn, dumb homicide, right? So, you know, Ashley and McKinney, they do their walk up. They do their big one, right? And, you know, Ashley arrives with these faux locks. And, you know, they kind of cute. I ain't gonna hold you. It's like, okay, that's cute. Okay. But, you know, Mackenzie, she's not interested in talking to Danny. She's like, I don't have time to talk to her right now. So, you know, Danny and Morgan over here clowning Ashley here. On the low, right? But everybody can hear that. Everybody's just looking like. Uh, it looks tight. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. 
<laughs> right. So, you know, Neek tells the girls, like, you know, leave the drama. Let's have fun. Let's over here turn up and drink. So they play Never Have I Ever. And I'm just like, okay, y'all want to leave the drama and have fun, but y'all play Never Have I Ever. Everybody play Never Have I Ever, but the anonymous edition. You, you think that? Of course you did. Messy. So, you know, they start asking the questions. Messy. It's like, never have I ever cheated. Never have I ever been a side chick. Never ever have I been fake. I'm just like, girl. So, you know, the question come up, never have I ever been a social, like, social um, climber. I'm friends with someone to climb a social status. I heard that you said you were only my friend in the basketball world. And Morgan looks at Ashley and, you know, they get into this heated discussion. And basically about who stopped being friends with who, for what, for why, boom, boom. I'm just like, y'all act like y'all really want to be friends, but y'all just mad because both of y'all has did stuff to each other to make each other mad. That's what it seemed like, right? And I wouldn't be surprised that next season or the end of this season, they're going to be cool. Right? Megan reads the last question. Megan's like, well, never have I ever liked Ashley's hair. Ciao. Ashley's like, so all the questions are about me. They're about me. Okay. She's like... Broke people have a lot of opinions. I'm like, oh, girl, you know. I mean, it was kind of messy for Megan. Like, Shawnee said, be neutral, Megan. You over here breaking the rules. We coming in hot with this game. Never have I ever played this game for at the end of peace. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it is what it was. So, Megan, she goes out. We see the next scene. And Megan goes out to lunch with her brother and her brother, Brian. Odds. And, you know, they basically catch up on Megan's dating life, you know, his kids, and, you know, they bring up the situation with, they, with her, their mother. Just hanging out, there's, like, a lot of things that we need to talk about. Like, everything that has happened over the years, it always gets swept under the rug. Like, mom has said so many bad things about me. Like Her brother's like, you know, I get both sides, and, you know, I talk to mom on the regular. And he said something that, you know, just triggered my, like, triggered me, right? And he's like, you know, sometimes like I told her that, but you know how my mother is. She hears what she wants to hear. and She doesn't what she doesn't. But at the end of the day, I still our mother. We have to respect her. Like if she may be. Honest. He's like, well, you know, um, whatever happens between you and mom, we have to respect her. We have to show her respect. This and the third. And, you know, like my whole thing is like Megan says she gave up. Her mother gave up her when she was little. So she gave up responsibility of Megan, which means you weren't really there for me. You didn't really go through the highs and lows in my life. So you want me to automatically respect you because you birthed me? Respect is a two-way street. You can earn respect. You can get respect. And respect is also revoked. So I feel like a lot of people see this thing about like, like parents, right? And like one thing about my parents is I will respect my, I give my parents automatic respect. But there comes a point in time where if I feel disrespected, I'm going to communicate that in, you know, a respectful way. But if it keeps happening, then I'm cutting off access. I would not give you access to me if you're not going to respect me. Just because you feel like you're a parent does not give you ultimate reins of my life as a grown ass adult. Like I already had a discussion with um, my dad. Like there's a type of way that I want you to speak to me. I'm not going to cuss at you, so don't cuss at me. I'm not going to yell at you, so don't yell at me. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to say anything threatening to you, so don't threaten me. Right. So we see Mulan, we see Mulan and Neek meet Nikki um, that will get pedicures. And you know, Neek tells the girls that, you know, she didn't like the vibes at the event. Uh, it wasn't very comfortable. We couldn't even really focus on having a good time. No, no, I felt some stuff for I'm like, dang, Ashley one got her hair done. You just over there laughing. <laughs> uh, like the girls are being like too much. Caddy, this and the third. Nikki and Neek didn't own... Um, don't want to feel like bullies. And basically implying that Danny, Megan, and Morgan are being bullies. Neek asks if Megan um, don't like Ashley due to like the hair question and the girls feel like basically stuck in the middle. I mean, we're neutral, but I don't but see it's myself. Draining. neutral, but it's so draining it's to be draining. around negative. <laughs> can't even enjoy the moment or the event. We see Mulan and Danny on the court, right? They playing ball and we learn a lot about Danny that basically um, Danielle, after she graduated college, she went overseas to play pro ball and she came back, you know, basically she got pregnant. After I graduated from UNLV, I went overseas and I played one season in Lithuania. I oh, came no, I back that, that summer, and then I had Carter. And, you know, Danny's trying to squash the whole drama with um, Mackenzie. She wants to try to talk to her because they already know that Rashad is the root, period, <laughs> right? Mulan tells Danny that, you know, she wants to have, like, a Last Supper type of dinner so, you know, all of them can get together and squash all the drama. Okay. 
So at the end of the episode, Morgan and Nikki, um, you know, basically, basically getting their makeup done. So Nikki tells Morgan that, you know, Nikki Milan called y'all bullies. Let some people tell me y'all bullies. <laughs> y'all was mean girls. Hmm. Who said that we were bullying mean girls? It was Milan and Nick. So now Morgan's over here pissed. And Nikki, I'm just sitting over here just like, Nikki, that's so funny that you say Morgan and Milan because you forgot to put yourself in there too. When I felt some stuff for I'm like, dang, Ashley won't get her hair done. You just over there laughable. Yeah. And making it seem like we just like, you know, bullies. Can't even enjoy the moment or the event. Because you was talking that mess too. So you want to sit up here and exclude yourself from the conversation. Like, you was like, oh yeah, I just hate the caddy mess. I just hate this and that and third. You want to talk about Ashley McKenzie? <coughs> so it's funny how you just slipped that in there and now you painted a picture that it was just Neek and Mulan. Well, you had stuff to say too. I mean, we see what we see what happens because to be honest, Nikki is giving two faced. Now Morgan's pissed and she told Milan basically, like, you know, at the end of the day you have a lot to say. Um, I just hope you can say it right here to my face. If she really thinks we're bullies, she's gonna have to justify it right here to my face. So that was the episode, y'all. Next episode, it looked like the girl's about to throw hands. Watch me a cliffhanger. They're gonna piss me off. But y'all, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Brian Keith, LG, Black Pew. Bet you didn't know we the Holy Trinity. Now let it go. Stop a dollar, break your head. Step into the room and get up in the bed. It's sweet. That's feeling good. It tastes sour because I'm better than the hood. Uh, because I get you hyper when I run out all around. Because I